Hello fellow key searchers, thanks for joining me yet again on another installment of the Secret Day Treasure Hunt. I wanted to begin this video with a preface to acknowledge why I've been using Rod Sterling and the Twilight Zone uh, specifically in the cover images for my previous videos. It is because I believe that Byron Price was a huge fan of Rod Sterling um, and mimicked uh, his work uh, in the same creative light um, in the Secret Day Treasure Hunt. And so I'm shifting gears now to Night Gallery because it is much more specific to uh, the Secret a Treasure Hunt. Um, and why? Because Night Gallery was a 1970s show that depicted an art curator um, describing macabre tales based on a uh, painting that told the story. And uh, that sounds very familiar to me as in the Secret a Treasure Hunt, we have images with hidden clues that tell a story about where the treasure is hidden. So a second part to my preface is uh, the book, The Talking Jewels, a novel that was an allegory about uh, King Louis XIV of France and his mistress, Madame de Pompadour. I firmly believe that The Secret of Treasure Hunt is also an allegory where the fair folk, the fair people are uh, representing real life characters um, and telling their stories, uh, much in the same light um, as Animal Farm, The Life of Pi, where animals are based to represent um, real life people. And uh, I think if we follow this train of thought, it'll help us solve uh, and find the remaining puzzles. But with that uh, said, uh, let's move on to the point of this video. So let's talk about the jewels telling us a story within each image. Does each jewel play a part in each image's story? Why is each jewel's placement one of a kind? Could each jewel's location slash motion within, within each image be a clue itself? Could each jewel be telling us where it's actually buried? Let's take a look at the first treasure found the city of Chicago, where the emerald is hanging by a thread from a hoop loop earring. Hanging by a thread is a figure of speech that means to be in a very dangerous situation or state. The loop earring itself is to, meant to represent the actual Chicago loop within the city of Chicago. Indeed, the treasure was found, um, as you can see by this diagram, next to train tracks and the ramp up to the bridge for East Jackson Drive. The clue in the verse was fence and fixture central too. The train tracks belonged to the original old central train station. The fenced and fixture are actually still there, or at least most of it is, minus the arch, um, which is the fence where you can see clearly the train tracks behind it. This image was also very literal in that this fenced and fixture was also represented within the image itself. However, I don't think people have paid notice to the fact that the earring is made of a metal pipe. And indeed, the fence is a metal chain link fence with posts and pipes made of metal. Now the next treasure found is Cleveland, where the aquamarine is set in stone on a monument. Again, this is another figure of speech. Um, and what does that mean? To be permanent, unchangeable. Uh, the clues in the verse were Socrates, Pindar, Apelles, free speech couplet, Birch, their respective professions. They were on the Greek cultural garden wall of Greek luminaries, and their names were in fact chiseled in stone on the other side of this wall in this image. Um, the red arrow marks a spot where the treasure was found. The third treasure found was in the city of Boston, where the peridot is caught in midair by a fairy next to a witch's hair tips. 
We were told the treasure was found in Langoni Park, uh, a baseball field for little leaguers, right on the Boston Harbor edge. Um, and as you can see, the witch's hair tips perfectly match the wharfs um, on the map, Google map, to the right of the image. We were also astounded when John G. Palancar, during the Expedition Unknown episode, told us they were hidden clues referencing baseball in the image. As you can see in the sleeve of the witch's dress, which looks like a home plate. The verse told us that your back to the stairs feel at home was another clue. And in fact, when you are at Langoni Park at home plate, uh, you can see the USS Constitution across the water as and the stairs to the Copps Hill Terrace are immediately behind you, um, which obviously is correct. Some treasure hunters believe that her palm also tells us that it's a baseball related puzzle because there's a man with a, a bat over his shoulder getting ready to swing, walking up to home plate, as you can see by the red oval shapes. But I believe the fairy herself is the biggest clue and that she's uh, flown to catch the jewel in her hands, much the way this Boston Red Sox player has jumped to catch a fly ball. So now taking a look at those treasures that have not yet been found, um, I'm looking at San Francisco, my hometown, where based on the image, the pearl appears to be suspended across a mystical woman's neckline. Well, the keyword being suspended as the Golden Gate Bridge is in fact a suspension bridge. Why did I choose that word suspended? Well, because if you look at the details of the pearl, it appears to be suspended high above her neckline, as you can see by the long shadow being cast. And in fact, the neckline, I believe, is a clue to the uh, shoreline of Aquatic Park. As you can see, this, uh, the beach sand there uh, matches perfectly, as well as the uh, oval uh, semicircle shape of the shoreline and her neckline. Therefore, I'm a huge fan of Aquatic Park and Fort Mason being uh, the locations where the treasure will be found. And to further support why I believe uh, that it'll be found there um, is because Fort Mason is the highest point in that whole area, which again connects to the uh, pearl being suspended above her uh, shoreline. The next clue is the giant pole giant step in the verse that I believe further supports it being there. Um, why? Well, because there used to be an original flagpole at Fort Mason that has since been moved, but originally uh, it was instrumental in the founding of California as the people that lived there um, were technically squatters on Mexican soil that took over and you know caused a revolution of sorts to found California. Today, it's just a median island uh, with a kiosk that tells you the story of the giant pole that was, was once there and the history behind it. And the X marks the spot on both the uh, Google Pic and the Google Map to show you exactly where it's located. Again, from there, you can also see the Golden Gate Bridge. You can see all of the um, clues in the image, Gerardelli Square, uh, the cable cars, uh, Alcatraz, you name it. The second puzzle that I've been working on, in addition to San Francisco, is the city of Montreal. Here the image shows us an opal that bedazzles the fabric of an Abbott's asymmetrical beret or hat. Well, let's look at what bedazzle means to decorate um, clothing in particular uh, with sequins, beads, whatnot. It also has a double meaning like so many other clues in this puzzle, um, in this book, that it means to greatly impress someone with outstanding ability or striking appearance. Well, that got me thinking about Karnak the Magnificent, which was very popular back in the day, and I can bet a year's salary that Byron Price would have enjoyed this comedic character. But more importantly, uh, that was a comedic version of an actual um, official royal sultan or someone of high status, royalty. Um, and I believe that's what the image is trying to represent here. It's telling us that this figure is very important obviously if he has jewels on his hat. 
Well, that got me thinking about John MacDonald. Several searchers agree that he might be, in fact, uh, represented in the caricature of the image. There is also a John MacDonald monument in uh, Place du Canada um, where um, it represents the accomplishments of John MacDonald um, as told here by this Wikipedia screenshot. But more importantly, what I noticed, I highlighted some words that connect to the fact that the opal is on fabric and that it is meant to represent something else like an important royal sultan's hat. But I noticed this word baldachin and it also involves a fancy high-end royal type of altar with fabric. So that leaves us to Whitestone closest at 12 paces as stated in the verse. I believe that this is meant to represent the instructions from the John MacDonald monument, where we will have to follow 12, maybe 12 city blocks, 12 other monuments, uh, 12 specific stone steps, um, trees perhaps, I don't know, but it's obvious that this is meant to represent something else. And with that, I want to know um, if this pattern fits in the city that you're working on. I would love to hear back and I'd be happy to do a part two to this video if you give me some input, because um, I believe there is a pattern here if we all work on it together.